Hans Hammond was born in America in 1895. He was a prolific inventor. Eventually, at the age of 32, he became the owner of an electric clock factory. Hammond loved music, and although he wasn't a musician, he was fascinated by this new exciting phenomenon of electricity. His imagination was fired by the idea of an electrical musical instrument, that is, one which actually produced its music by electrical means, unlike, for instance, an organ whose blower was powered by an electric motor. Hammond got to thinking about his electric clock motors and the fact that their rotors moved when current was applied to their coils. Would it not be possible that if the rotors were moved by another means, then current would be produced from the motors, just like tiny dynamos? Hammond tried it and it worked. What was most fascinating was the fact that when the motors were spun at different speeds, the electrical signals that were produced were of different pitches. Hammond was hooked. He knew from that moment that his idea would work. Hammond realised that if he could make his equipment generate harmonics or overtones of each pitch, and these overtones could be mixed in proportions by the player, then he'd be able to simulate the sound of other instruments, the forerunner of the modern synthesizer. This was an extraordinary concept in the 1930s, but that's just what he was able to do. Hammond arranged that as well as a tone wheel to generate the fundamental or basic pitch of each note, he'd have multiple tone wheels all geared together on linked shafts to generate seven other harmonics for each note. This meant that he would have to have about 300 wheels for a four octave keyboard and seven switches operated by each key simultaneously. Then there was the problem of combining the strength of those harmonics. Hammond brought the output from the wheels onto sliders or draw bars as they were named. This was an easy way that the player could adjust his harmonic balance whilst playing. However, the wiring arrangements inside the organ were colossal. There were numerous technical problems to be overcome. By the time the first model was available from the factory, the demand was overwhelming and competition was fierce to obtain the very first organs off the production line. The first model was sold to George Gershwin and the rest is history.